I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance channel. For the longest time, we were taught that black people had no history and that our history began with slavery. And we know that is far from the truth. Today, we're going to take a look at one of the oldest and the most ancient civilizations known to man, and that is Nubia, the kingdom of Kush, what is today the modern day Sudan. Did you know that the country with the most pyramids in the world is Sudan? Sudan is the region along the Nile River located in what was once known as Nubia. Nubia slash Sudan has between 200 to 255 known pyramids compared to Egypt's 138. The pyramids in Sudan were built by the Kingdom of Kush, an ancient civilization that ruled areas along the Nile River from 1070 BC to 350 AD. Just like the Egyptians, the Kushites entombed their royalty below imposing pyramids. Thanks to the movies, when most of us, from a mental image of a pyramid, we immediately think about Egypt. However, despite what many of us might have assumed, Egypt isn't the pyramid capital of the world, or even northern Africa. That honor belongs to Nubia. The buildings are quite different. For starters, the Nubian pyramids are far steeper and narrower, and they're built from stepped stones as opposed to the smooth surface of the wider Egyptian pyramids. The sizes of the pyramids differ a lot too. The average Nubian pyramid stands roughly 20 to 98 feet tall, while the average Egyptian pyramid is roughly 453 feet. Once the biggest concentration of the Nubian pyramids is in the ancient city of Monroe. Monroe is located near the middle of modern day Sudan. The city alone contains about 200 pyramids. The Nubian civilization was a thriving metropolis. Nubia was home to some of Africa's earliest kingdoms. One of the best known is the legendary kingdom of Kush. Yet, it's the same name of Kush spoken about in the Bible. What was the kingdom of Kush, you ask? With its series of capitals in what is now northern Sudan, this empire helped define the political and cultural landscape of northeastern Africa for more than 3,000 years. Kush was part of Nubia, described as the region between the cataracts of the Nile the cataracts of the Nile are a series of six white water rapids that have been used as key rest stops, so to speak, for thousands of years. The first cataract roughly corresponds to the modern area of Aswan, Egypt, while the sixth lies more than 720 miles south, north of Karutum, Sudan. Ancient Nubian cultures were sophisticated and cosmopolitan as the region served as a major trading center for goods from the African interior, Arabian Desert, and Mediterranean Basin. From Sub-Sahara Africa, Nubian communities traded gold, ivory, ebony, and animal pelts. Sometimes merchants traded the animals themselves. African animals such as monkeys, elephants, antelopes, and giraffes were exported to private zoos across the Mediterranean and the Near East. From Arabia, Egypt, and Maghreb, the Mediterranean basin, Nubians imported products such as olive oil, incense, timber, mostly acacia and sadar, and bronze. The hazardous cataracts of the Nile made sailing long distances along the Nile nearly impossible. So many goods from the Levant had to be imported from the Nubian east through the ports of the Red Sea. The Kingdom of Kush is probably the most famous civilization to emerge from Nubia. Three Kushite kingdoms dominated Nubia for more than 3,000 years, with capitals in Kerma, Napata, and Moreau. Kerma was the most powerful Nubian city-state between 2450 BCE and 1450 BCE. It is sometimes considered Kushite and sometimes pre-Kushite. The Kerma Kingdom controlled the Nile Valley between the first and the fourth cataracts, making its territory as extensive as its powerful neighbor to the north, which was Egypt. Nubians of this period 
practiced agriculture, hunted and fished, raised livestock such as cattle and sheep, and labored in workshops that produced ceramic and metal goods. The articles most associated with the Kerma culture is probably the Dephifas. The Dephifas, is, it's like a church. It's a mud brick temple where ceremonies were performed on the top. The Dephifa is a unique structure in the Nubian agriculture. Another very interesting fact about the Dephifas is the mud brick construction material kept the interior of the Dephifas cool in the hot Nubian sun while the tall colonnades allowed for greater air circulation. The walls of the Dephlifers were tilted and decorated with elaborate paintings and some were lined in gold leaf. Kushite civilization shared many cultural connections with Egypt during this period. Records indicate marriages between Egyptian and Kushite royal families. Around 745 BCE, the Kushite king Pi invaded Egypt, and Pi became the first pharaoh of Egypt's 25th dynasty. Perhaps the most influential pharaoh of the 25th dynasty was King Tahakra, who was Pi's son. Tahakra engaged in enormous construction projects in both Upper and Lower Egypt. Upper Egypt included Southern Egypt and Nubia, while Lower Egypt included the Nile Delta. Under his leadership, Temples and monuments were expanded at Memphis, Thebes, and Jabu Barco in Egypt. Statues of Tahakra and other pharaohs of the 25th dynasty are important artifacts which still stand to this day. In later periods, the Assyrians and the Egyptians attempted to erase Kushite leadership and the 25th dynasty from history by destroying their statues and even their names from historic records, but these efforts failed. The final period of the Kingdom of Kush is sometimes known as the Meroitic period, after its capital of Moro. The Meroitic period lasted about 300 BCE until the 4th century CE. Moro was ideally positioned as a port city on the Nile with trade routes to both the Red Sea and the African interior. With the Nile making irrigation possible, Moro was an agriculturally fertile area and also set next to lucrative iron and gold mines. The most significant artifacts of the Meroitic period are no doubt its pyramids. Pyramids don't lie. People do, but the pyramids tell the story. The true story. A single macropolis or burial ground at Moro has more pyramids than all of Egypt combined. Like Egyptian pyramids, the pyramids at Moro are tombs. More than a dozen Kushite kings, queens, and other nobles are interred with pyramids. Although, unlike Egyptian pyramids, Meroitic pyramids do not hold the tomb itself. The burial chambers lies beneath the pyramid, making the pyramid less a tomb than an enormous headstone. So you see folks, the truth of the matter is, we are the builders of great civilizations, black people. Despite many historians trying to write black people out of history, the proof is in the pyramids. The proof is in the artwork in the great kingdom of Nubia, Sudan, the kingdom of Kush. And just as a point of reference, when you hear Nubia, Kush, Sudan, Moreau, it's like saying New York, Manhattan, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, regions, states, cities, counties, etc. There are many who try to debate who were the builders of the pyramids and the great civilizations of Egypt, but when it comes to Nubia, Sudan, there is no debate. It is plain as the nose on your face who these people were. And make no mistake about it, we know the difference between the Hamites and the Shemites, and even Japheth, but that's another story. And keep in mind, many of these people were Shemitic, so there were Shemitic and Hermetic people who participated in the building of these civilizations. It wasn't just Moses, Jesus, and Joseph who traveled back and forth to these different lands. 
But one thing that they were, they were black. And we are not delusional. We know that all black people does not come from royalty. However, many, many actually do. We are the true royals, as the true royal will say on her channel. We are the true royals. And we are the builders of great civilizations, great cultures, great monuments, and great inventions. It's just that many of us don't even know it. And we would also like to add, please do not take our word for anything. Anything that you see on our videos, please do the research yourself. This information is easily and readily available, especially in the information age that we live in today. This is who we are. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. We ask that you please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, thou art rich.